So my patient is a 44 year male, was operated for AVN, her right hip was operated in 2012 and left hip was operated in 2019. Last three to four years, he had a severe pain in the right hip and since the last few months, he was not able to walk also. His movement was restricted at extremes and X-ray showed the superior migration of the acetabular cup along with the loosening. Okay. So to, first of all, to rule out infection, uh, clinically there was no sign of infection and ESR, CRP were normal, counts were normal, no surgical site inflammation was there and uh, only terminal restriction of movements were there. So Thorson, what, th what are your thoughts on the, the 4600? That's from the synovial fluid, correct? That's, a, that's the aspiration? Is that right? No, I didn't aspirate it, sir. I didn't aspirate it. You did not? Uh, there, was, there were no signs of infection the clinically of also, and serological parameters are within normal limits. Okay. Is this one where you would aspirate if you see bone loss? I mean, I, I assume I would. I would always aspirate. If, I mean, it, this has to be revised, of course, and we, re, we aspirate every kind of revision and if there is an implant inside. So um, this is not a question at all. It's, it's CC was 4,600 cell count? That's what I thought. Yeah. It's 4,600. 4, that was the aspiration. 4,600 is very suspicious. Oh, yeah, there is. It's, it's quite suspicious. And um, normal CRP and ESR does. This is blood. Blood. It's blood. That's not ah, WBC so count. It's, ah, it's blood. Okay. When I, yeah, when I saw 4,600. Sorry, 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 sorry. Synovial. So, but definitely I would aspirate this joint, of course. Is this um, 2012? I mean, so is this highly cross linked polyethylene? You know? Yeah, it, it was not, not done by me, sir. It was done elsewhere. Okay. Because I always wonder when I see, you know, bone loss, and, I, you know, it looks like there's, there's obviously some. Some bone loss here, migration, like but osteolysis. Poly. Conventional poly. It looks like conventional poly. It looks like conventional poly. Hard for me to tell. I don't see, I mean, you can tell that it's conventional, because if not, I always wonder with that skirted metal head. I think, yeah, I wonder exactly. about There's a skirted neck, small head, so small cup size. I think something was there. Why a skirted neck was used for a primary avascular necrosis? If it was a... Yeah. I mean, it would impinge, you know. So would anyone rule out, I don't know, like, you know, metal ions for anybody? Would anybody get worried about trunnionosis? I mean, you look at the track record of the stem, it has a good track record, but is anyone getting metal ions in this case? If they see, you know it's a metal head with a skirt, right? So I think that's just something to consider, delayed loosening. It's rare, but it can happen. Anyone on the panel, I just go down the line. Would anyone get cobalt chrome if they see a metal head nowadays or... Or not? If it's a metal on metal large head, definitely COCR uh, levels are important, but I don't think in this case we are uh, okay. dealing with that. We've seen some trunnionosis with 28 millimeter heads with a skirt. We have seen it. I'm not saying here though, so it does happen. Just one thing to keep in mind if you have bone loss and you have a skirted metal head, 28 millimeter, we've seen it. Um, and so just something to think about. Uh, Can I comment? Sorry. Yep. Yeah. Sure, go ahead. Looks like there are two or three CC screws around. So maybe primarily this, somebody might have put a bone graft over the shell, figure of seven, sure. might have collapsed, so maybe that is the scenario. Yeah, didn't have good structural so resorption potentially and then failure, delayed failure, okay. So um, moving forward then, so we're looked aseptic, superior migrated cup. Um, now, we, now are we gonna get advanced imaging on the panel? Is this, another, is this a case where you'd also get a CT and we see some modeling of the bone migration um, who's, you know, advanced imaging? Yes, no? We look for a CT scan, obviously. CT? Yes, sir. Right. CT was done. Even though we have no, nothing 100%, but I would get all the parameters to rule out infection, intra-op, plus a three-phase bone scan, or a white cell labeled scan, because I want to be sure. And inside also, I will send a frozen section. We can get the counts inside also. TLC of more than 1,500, or polymorphs of more than 75%, and have a backup of an infected in case it is. So okay. that will be definitely there. So do you send fresh frozen on all your aseptic, uh, aseptic revisions? I do send the polymorph, percentage of polymorphs, and a white cell count. So because ask. either it's infection or it's likely or there is no infection. So I just right. keep that EBJS criteria in my mind always. Mm -hmm. And if two or three things are positive, then I would rather treat it as an infection. I would rather aspirate and rule out infection first. Of course, pre-op. And then intraoperatively, if there is a suspicion, I might send it for a 
uh, HPE examination and also intraoperative. You see, some looks a little slimy. Yes. Take that sample and tissue. send that, right? But this is one you let the pathologist. They can't go home. They have to stick around till you send or till you decide that, right? Okay. So what do we see here? Maybe just take it through the CT scan. You want to describe? What so CT has uh, a posterior. The cup has migrated posteriorly and superior migration up to the greater supralateral migration up to the greater sciatic notch. And also there is a ischial lysis, so as per the Peploski, it was type 2B or might be 2, 3A. Okay. So not a discontinuity then? Yeah. No, close, but not. Another, another close call. This is a 3A defect, yeah. 3A, It looks okay. like more than 3 centimeter lateral migration, 3A defect. Yeah. And we have to look at the femur as well. There is osteolysis around the femur as well. So I think yeah. we have the femur, to... Femur, femur X-ray, it was okay. I That's don't a think any... Yeah. Karai stems some resorption it, it, proximally though, right? It's a little bit osteolysis, but fixed distally probably, yeah. I think it, it's interesting here because from the X-ray, I would say it's more 3B and up and in than is 3A. Yeah. yeah. But the CT shows more and 3A defect. Three, yeah. It's interesting. So, but... Um, and of course, you worry more from about discontinuity. I would uh, thinking of 3B. <coughs> if yeah. I see the X-ray, I would say it's mm. a 3B one, yes. Yeah. So, in terms of things we want to have available, okay, over here, is this going to be hemispherical shell alone? Are you thinking hemisphere plus augment? Are you thinking cup cage, custom tri flange? Take me through maybe where oh. you, what you're going to have ready to go down the panel. So the 3D construction images couldn't isolate the defect properly due to the metal artifact. Okay. So, how will you plan the surgery? Which inventory of division implants would you like to keep in the operation theater? So, yeah. if it's 3A, you'd like to bring the center of rotation down. So, it has to be a superior augment, get the cup down. Okay. That's, that should get down. So, you want a true anatomic hip center with a superior augment. Okay. Depends on the size. Uh, sometimes you are good with a jumbo cup uh, and screws, but I agree, you have to bring the center down. So, you will end up with a wedge and a trabecular metal cup. In Indian scenarios, it's very difficult to get the revision implants uh -huh. uh, with us. And uh, it's all secretion of adrenaline when we enter in the operation theater to operate such, such cases mm. without having proper, knowing the proper amount of bone loss that we had. Okay. Because CT is not so informative due to the metal artifacts. Okay. Would anyone do impaction grafting? <laughs> You know, I mean, that's been described, you know, with decent results in these contained defects. Maybe medially I would put some grafts, low grafts there, but uh, definitely superiorly I would put an augment and uh, bring the center of rotation down. And okay. medially I would put some grafts and put a multi hole trivicular metal cup. Okay. Would people put their augment, let's see, we're going the augment. Augment first, cup second, cup first, augment second. Any just go down the line, and what the order of reconstruction or does it depend? Depending if you get a AP fit first, then the cup first. First, okay. Cup first. If you don't, then the augment first and then the cup. Got it. Okay. That was good. Yep. I would put a trial cup first, get the fit. I'm sure about the positioning of the cup, then put the augment and then come back and put Sometimes the final cup in the cement. Have the screws not all the way down maybe. Yeah. Put the cup in and then sink yeah. the screws. And then unitize with cement. Are we as everyone using cement to unitize the augment yeah. to the cup? Always. Always. Yeah, always. I think so. And always an inferior screw. Whenever we're doing a large cup and with augment, always an inferior screw. Okay. It's challenging to get sometimes. Yeah. It is. But when you're doing a trabecular metal cup, then you can drill hole and get a get an inferior yeah. screw. Great point. So the drill through cup, it's all porous. It's nice if you have it because you can put holes wherever you want. Yeah. Like the spine surgeon, they use the sham for the pedicle screw. Yeah. They put the inferior screw through the PV, superior ramus of the PV with the sham and put the screw. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Well, show us what you did here. Yeah. So. so these are the limitations of CT scan in revision scenario. The metal artifacts, artifacts obscure the fine details. CT scan interpretation is subjective and more imaginative, and surgeons need to correlate the 2D images in 3D dimensions. Yeah. So how can we know the defect better in the pre-operative period while planning the case? So we went for the 3D printed model here. Mm -hmm. These are the 3D printing software, which has got the much better software than the CT scan. And this is a model which I got from the 3D printing. 
And here you see that this is the defect which was present here, which was posterior superiorly. And this is a true acetabulum, which has got the uh, triangular osteophyte inside it. And this is the whole defect uh, posterior superiorly. It looks like you have good um, pinch. And this is a new cup position which I opted for in the pre-operative planning, which has the both anterior and the posterior column intact. And this is what I planned it in the op my office. I reamed it in proper inclination and antiversion, and I achieved a good fixation without any augments. Even you can try applying the augments also and see that which augments fixed fix over it are suitable if required. So this is what this is a trial I inserted inside. It it got a well fixed, mm -hmm. and there was no need for any augment. So now there are no surprises for me on the table. The surgery team knows what is to be done. Better coordination, smaller incision, less surgery duration, less blood loss, less risk of infection, and if required, patient-specific 3D printed augments and implants can also be made. So we planned the lateral position for the patient, and we proceeded with the same incision posterolateral and uh, we planned for the retention of the femoral stem and exchange of the femoral head. But since it was my first case, 3D case, so I also kept bone allograft and augments as a backup. So this is a posterolateral case. I removed the implants uh, cup from the posterolateral, but I couldn't find uh, the true acetabulum through this incision. And uh, there was a lot of fibrosis, and I couldn't approach the true acetabulum. So I went anterior to the trochanter and opened it from there. And then I could find the true acetabulum there. And then the things went similarly, which I already planned in my office. And believe me, if I have not done uh, 3D printing, I would have put the cup in that false acetabulum defect and put an augment above it and fixed it. But since I was sure that there is some true acetabulum anteriorly, so I went anteriorly and again opened it from there and found the true acetabulum there. And this is the post-operative picture, immediate post-op picture. So we came out with the primary cup. Primary cup. Did you have good initial fixation when you put the cup? Yeah, yeah, in? it's a very good fixation. Sir. Whatever I got in the office, same fixation I got it in the yeah. operation theater also. I think it highlights. I mean, I think it highlights an important point where we talk about cup coverage or how much postbone contact you need, and it really comes down. I think not just they say like maybe forty percent, but you could probably have less with highly porous cups if you get that primary pinch. You know, that's that's the ischium and the AIS, and it looks like you got that posterior superior on coverage. I mean, I think. Um, you're put, we're pushing the boundaries of what we can achieve, you know, I think in terms of um, uh, that interference fit. Um, but ho I think host bone location matters, right? And you had the best location with the ischium and the AIS being intact. Would you agree for your, for your component? Yeah, yeah. yeah. May, I, may I have a question? Uh, and so it's well done, of course, but should we always aim really for primary center as acetabulum here? Because it seems to be very low and the leg lengthening is about two to three centimeters. Uh, I, would, I would go here probably for more compromise to get more fixation, to get more bone, host bone contact. And um, it looks great, it's, but it's a little bit low in my opinion. And it's what did you, sorry, good. what did you do to the defect there in the superiorly posterior? Nothing. Nothing, nothing. That, uh, I got a very good fixation interposteriorly. Okay. How far is the patient now? 
It's now six months, sir. Six months. Uh, this video is, I think, few days back only. Okay. And protected. Next is also latest X-ray six months. Great. I think it's it's showing how if this you know obviously you get good fixation long term survivorship what's possible with these with with highly porous shells right in terms of uh, bone contact you know um, the classic Poprosky classification doesn't quite fit that you know but I think yeah go ahead it's a good idea to look at sea arm images during the surgery to find out where the real socket is and take a iliac oblique view especially to yeah. see where the uh, it, Okay. The inferior part and, uh, is. Trap X ray? Any The operative planning with the 3D image is not so costly, also. It took, it, uh, I think, 25,000 extra to pay. Patient is to pay for that. Okay, wonderful. Well, great.